it's April 27, 1578, and another remarkable event is about to be uncovered by Aria, Rebecca, and Ali, the Retrospectors. They wear their hair long, curled and recurled by artifice, with little bonnets of velvet on top of it like whores in the brothels, and the ruffles on their linen shirts are of starched finery and one half foot long, so their heads look like St. John's on a platter. These were the words of contemporary chronicler Pierre de l'Estoile on the Mignons, a group of favoured courtiers of the French king Henry III, who on this day engaged in a bloody duel which would shock France. Extraordinary that in this era, any particular group would be picked out for looking especially effeminate and or fawning over a monarch. That feels feels like pretty standard issue stuff. (laughs) I must say I saw a depiction of them and they they do look particularly curious. They have these sort of billowing, brightly coloured pantaloons, but they're very short, like a sort of puffy version of short shorts. And then they have ruffs (laughs) around their necks and a feathered cap that they wore at a jaunty angle and long white or pink leggings from what I could see and shoes that have a massive buckle on the front. And then they had these shirts with a kind of corrugated arm, again, bright coloured so I mean basically brilliantly ridiculous but I suppose it was the equivalent in 1578 Rebecca of expressing your allegiance to music by what you wear right mods and rockers Uh, it really was like which king do you support well get your velvet (laughs) hat out get your ruff out because you're with King Henry this group had sprung up with Henry III and he'd only come to the throne four years earlier so this was a bit of a shock to the country to have these people who, yeah, they didn't just dress in a way that was considered ridiculous and they had their, their curled hair but they also powdered and painted their faces they wore earrings, they wore lace so there was this implication that they were also this corrupting influence on the court, you know, they were this bunch of effeminate freaks who were eroding the fabric of the nation you know, it was a very, this is a very very tense time in France's history, this is during the wars of the religion and so Especially, particularly the rebellious Protestants, saw the, this group around the Catholic king as being a sign of, of how degenerate the Catholic state had become. But then they ended up having a fight, these minions, a duel with another group who supported another Henry, right? Yeah, everyone <laughs> in the story is called Henry. Henry yeah. III had failed to produce an heir, and this didn't help the rumours swirling around his, you know, effeminate court. He was also a bit of a mummy's boy. And there not being an heir was a problem because without one, the crown was going to pass to Henry of Navarre, who was a very distant cousin, and he was a prominent Protestant, which would be explosive because the Catholics had just staged this massive massacre of Protestants only a few years before. And so to try and avert this from happening, Henry, the, this is the third Henry of the story, but he's not Henry yeah. the third. <laughs> Henry, the Duke of Guise, I'll just call him the Duke, founded this Can Catholic we call his league. tribe the Guises? That would help the me. The Guises, yes, <laughs> exactly. Okay, so he's the Duke of Guise, and he had founded this so-called Catholic League to try and eradicate Protestantism and replace Henry the third, who they saw as being a bit too tolerant of Protestants anyway. And so this duel was between the Mignons, which, by the way, in modern French means cutie, so you could call it the duel of the cuties, but in this context <laughs> means more like the darlings. So this duel was between the Mignons of the King and the Guises, the Mignons of the Duke. And specifically, it was between two men, Jacques de Calus, who was uh, the king's very favourite mignon, and Charles de Balzac. Balzac? <laughs> Balzac. De he Balzac. Was... De Balzac. Let's not go Charles too deep. De Balzac, with this. as his enemies called him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the two of them developed an animosity towards one another after Calus has, had allegedly made fun of Balzac when he saw him leave a room with a woman of low morals. Um, there was another story, actually, that the two rivals had decided to reenact the battle of the Herati and the Curiati, who were these ancient Roman warriors. I think it actually seems to be more to do with this kind of slight, this perceived uh, loss of honour that led the two, these two guys then seconded and thirded by their chosen swordsmen to meet at 5am at markets near the Bastille in Paris. What about this thing that it's a reenactment of a classical Roman duel, though? That seems like something people would say afterwards to justify the spoiler forthcoming completely pointless loss of life that ensued from the duel. Like, actually, there was no classical allusion, was there, by essentially, I'll meet you in the car park and have a go. (laughs) <laughs> no, so this actually came, as you say, from afterward. And while the whole of France was condemning the bloody violence, you know, someone's always got to have a hot take. And the hottest take of the time came from a biographer called Brantome, who said, this fight was very beautiful and was compared to that of the Karashi and the Harashi, Albans and Romans, respectively, because such a battle had not been seen in France for a long time. 
but it seems like he was really the only one who was saying that he was the one making the comparison he was reporting on because it was <laughs> definitely not a glamorous showdown. Well, the reason why this duel wasn't, as the name would imply, just between two people is that at this time, your second got involved. It wasn't just Kalis and Balsak who were fighting one another. There were six swords involved. Yeah, so at 5am, the, the six of them turn up. And keep in mind, they're actually all really young as well. A couple of them are only 18, another couple in their early 20s. I feel like dueling is a thing you don't do once you're past 30 anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah Balzac was 33. He yeah. really should have been over dueling by now. I think so. Um, and one of Kalis' seconds shared that very opinion, Ollie. Uh, one of them was called Riberac, and he went up to one of Kalis' seconds called Mougiron, and he said that they should try and reconcile their friends. That's sort of the traditional job of the second is to try and broker some kind of peace without any bloodshed. But Mougiron basically laughed in his face and demanded to fight him. And then, according to John Gideon Millingen's History of Dueling, the other second, Schomburg, beholding this episode, addressed Livare, who was his opposing second, very politely saying... These gentlemen are fighting. What shall we do? To which the other replied, we cannot do better than fight to maintain our honour. So they set to it as well. Yeah, and Schomburg severely cut the cheek of Liveray, but Liveray actually ran Schomburg through fairly quick smart and killed him instantly. Meanwhile, the principles of Kalis and Balsack got into a fairly extended melee, but Kalis was armed with a rapier only, having somehow forgotten to also bring his dagger, while Balsack had both a rapier and a dagger. Sorry, how do you go to a duel and forget to bring your dagger? Like, surely on the checklist when you leave the house this morning, I know it's early, no one marks an early start. It's just yeah. like, it's like bringing your passport well, to the airport, isn't it? You're going to think, what's I, the I, thing I need for the duel again? I, I guess if you're also thinking jaunty cap, check, rough, yeah. check. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, I'd say, like, one of the things that was controversial about this was the total lack of chivalry so apparently Kalus is like oh no I forgot my dagger and then sort of you know there was a quiet moment where he obviously, ex he obviously expected Balzac to be like well I'll throw my dagger aside and Balzac was like too bad for you <laughs> he just came at him he just came at him slashing him and K like, you can imagine how awful this must have been he was literally coming at him left and right Kalus was stabbed 19 times oh god and Balzac walked away with a scratch. Balzac was the only person who walked away unscathed. Four of them died and one of them sustained a serious injury. And the reason for all of those wounds is that the dagger is meant to be your defensive implement. And so he was having to defend himself just with his arm. And so he was just taking these slashes straight to the arm. And in the end, he was pretty much bleeding out at the point that he asked Balzac to be satisfied and for the combat to be stopped. But it didn't stop him dying from his wounds which left, in the end, only two of them having survived the duel. So does that make it a draw? Like, who was the winner? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I think the conclusion is that it was honourably fought, and therefore honour had been restored, if not necessarily life been maintained. <laughs> Supposedly, Balzac quickly took refuge with the Duke of Guise, his patron, because Henry III was absolutely distraught about what happened to his favourite, particularly Calus. Mm. Those curly-haired boys! Such a waste <laughs> of curly hair! My beautiful, my beautiful <laughs> curly-haired boys, he might have said. We, what we do know that... He, I mean, what we, we, what we do know who happened, probably. A chronicler of the time called Latai, he wrote that Henry III loved Calus more than anyone else. When he was confined to bed, he brought him broths and promised the surgeons 10,000 francs if they cured him and promised his handsome minion 10,000 crowns to give him courage. And yet he died saying, Ah, my king, always talking about God and his mother. <laughs> <laughs> see why he had a reputation <laughs> but he was so stricken with grief apparently that he forbade all dueling in his realm on pain of death which seems pointless anyway if you're gonna die if you duel i guess even if you win you lose as in <laughs> you're dead either way so maybe it's an effective ban but it was also a really popular pastime well i suppose it's not a pastime but a, a popular way to restore honor in 16th century france more than four thousand men slaughtered each other in this way between 15 1575 and 1625. So this was going on a lot before, finally, Henry put an end to it. Now, you mentioned there were three Henrys. So there were the Guises, who were the Duke of Guise's uh, minions. And Guises. then there, were, there was Henry the uh, III, Henri the Third, the King of France, and his minions. They were the ones that smelt nice and had the roughs. What was the other Henry? What was he got to do with it? 
Henry the Fourth, and he did actually end up coming to the throne. And guess what happened after all this panic over what will we do if a Protestant gets on the throne? He converted to Catholicism, and everything <laughs> was pretty much okay. That's me summarising summarising one of the most turbulent eras <laughs> yeah. of France. It was pretty much okay. Tomorrow. Just sitting for 45 minutes, peering out, listening to opera, and just enjoying the experience. Love the show? Support the show. Patreon.com slash Retrospectors. Part of the ACAST Creator Network.